Yo, what's up guys, Mike Red Fox. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through what I've been checking daily to see when I could turn my GPUs back on. So the first thing I start with is what to mine. And the card I have in here is the RTX A2000. It's amongst, if not the most efficient card you can get from NVIDIA and use for mining. It's an RTX workstation card. I have a video on it. I'll leave it linked up in the card above. But what I've done here is I put in my hash rates that I've gotten with this card for uh, at hash four gigabyte, which is ETC hash theorem classic for Ergo and Autolycus. I've done uh, Flux on Zell hash and then uh, Kapow and Firopow as well. The other coins I've either found stuff online or just left in the default values. Now, what I'm going to start with here as I hit calculate is a six cent electric rate, which I know is a very good electric rate. It's not what I have. But there are farms out there, especially the big ones that do have this electric rate. And the reason I chose this is because when the merge happened, this was the electric rate that you needed to have in order to be at break even. So now when you look at it, you can see you're actually profitable. And I know if you got into mining at any point over the last like year and a half, you're like profitable, Mike, four cents per day is profitable. You know what? Yes, it is because prior to this wonderful last year and a half or whatever we've had this was the stuff you had to look at and what you have to remember is that if the goal is that you love crypto and you want to make money on it in the long term is to think long term if you are profitable in my opinion even a cent two cent three cent over what that gpu is burning in electric and your plan is to hold and wait for the next cycle and the next bull run then that's why mining is great. And hopefully all of you have gotten to a, a wonderful place where you've paid off your cards and aren't struggling financially with this big burden of costs on GPUs that you've paid for. But enough about that. Back to the video. So as we go through here, you can see six cent electric rate, you are certainly profitable. And yes, four cents is profitable. So what I've been watching is a couple of things. I'm going to skip ahead to the Ethereum Classic network hash rate. So when you look at this, I'm over at two miners, by the way, you can see the merge happens and everybody moves over to mine Ethereum Classic. Why does this happen? This happens for a couple of reasons. One, there's ASICs that mined Ethereum. They're at hash base ASICs and they can move right over to Ethereum Classic to try to chase profitability. Two, a lot of GPU miners move over to Ethereum Classic because they don't have to change overclocks. They don't have to rewire their rigs, take into account more power. It's essentially the same algorithm as Ethereum was using. It is the same algorithm Ethereum was using. So you can switch over pretty easily. But what has happened is it's not profitable based on the electric rate you may have, depending on where you live. So you can see big spike up. The price didn't skyrocket to take in all these new miners. And so the network hash rate has just dropped and dropped and dropped over the weeks. And then what happens is the difficulty drops and drops and drops as well, which means you're getting more Ethereum Classic for your hash rate than you were getting before. And the way I track this, I use my Jazz Miner X41U. I have the hash rate that it does and the power that it uses and I hit calculate. When I come down here, I look at my estimated rewards and I see these go up and up and up as the weeks go on, which means I'm getting more Ethereum Classic for the hash rate that it's doing. My profit, 80 cents per day, not the best profit in the world, but still profitable. And this will change based on the USD value, in my case, the fiat value of Ethereum Classic. But what I'm really tracking and what, I've and what I did all of 2018, 2019, and anybody else, shout out to you. Let me know in the comment section down below if you were mining back then, you really were tracking your estimated rewards because you're getting more coin because the hope is that the price of the coin is gonna go up over time. So I've watched myself accumulate more coin over time so i'm going to pause here and what i'm going to talk about is please don't mine at a loss a significant loss if you're losing a cent two three five cents per card i get it i would do that i've done that before maybe beats paying exchange fees and all that other stuff but please do not mine at a significant loss if you're losing a dollar per card a day shut that off if you can and if you have access to exchanges based on where you live it's probably better to buy the coin at the time because the goal is to accumulate coin Accumulate cryptocurrency, but don't do it at a loss fiat wise so that you can hold all of that crypto, not financial advice, and then wait for the next cycle to hit where prices rise dramatically and you can make decisions there whether you want to cash out or whatever 
is that you want to do. So I've been checking on my jazz minor every day to just give me an indicator of kind of where things are going. And what's wind up happening as we jump back over to the What's Mine website is that it's gone from six cents being profitable to seven cents being profitable. And we actually got all the way up to 10 cent a couple days ago was profitable. And right now it looks like eight cent is probably the most uh, at break even that you can be at. Nine cent, I think you might be losing a cent. So we're gonna say like eight, nine, probably even 10 cent uh, electric rate, losing three cents a day mining flux. Probably around there, eight, nine cent, you're at pretty much break even. I'm not gonna split hairs over a cent here and there. You're pretty much break even, which is moving in the right direction, which is exactly what I wanna see. And the reason this happens is there are miners that will capitulate, miners, especially miners that got in over the last year or two, they're gonna sell all their hardware, or even long-term miners are gonna shut their rigs off and just wait and be patient. That's what I did over the last several years waiting for this last cycle to happen. And so the network hash rate is gonna come down and then difficulty is gonna come down and it'll find some happy medium where there will be an electric rate that will be at break even. What we're watching happen is that our electric rate is rising, you know, week over week and day over day to get around eight, nine cent. And again, it hit 10 cent just the other day, electric rate. And you gotta to remember too, like these big, big ASIC mining farms, they're paying like four or five, maybe six cents for their electric rate, but a large majority of the world residentially, especially with the rising rates this last year, are paying much, much more than that. I mean, you can go overseas, you can go on the West Coast of the US, I mean, you might be talking like 20, 30 cents per kilowatt hour. So there's gonna be some place that it essentially hits an equilibrium in there. And that's why it's been so important for me, and I've talked about this time and time again to get the most efficient GPUs. Uh, it's for times like right now. Anyway, enough about that. I could talk about that stuff forever. You guys, if you've been around the channel, have heard me talk about that before. So let's keep looking at some network hash rates here. Uh, kind of the same story, Ergo, big spike, huge fall off. Ergo's got some mess on its hands for uh, what's going on on its network. Ravencoin, let's go take a look at that one. Um, not as drastic as a drop off, Still coming down, but not as drastic. Firo, a little bit more drastic of a drop in network hash rate. And then Flux, probably the one that has stayed the most steady, which is really impressive. Once everybody moved off of Ethereum, they joined Flux, and they've pretty much stayed there, which uh, I am I love that because I'm a big, big fan of Flux. So yeah, looking really good there. The other thing I've been checking is ASICs. Again, maybe like a leading indicator of what could be happening with GPU mining. Um, not that GPU can mine. They can, but not profitably or even close mine uh, any of these cryptocurrencies or most of these cryptocurrency algorithms. But you can see Kadena leading the charge right there. Uh, but I was looking at the Edhash based ones and we come down to, I think the first one, yeah, it's a Jazzminer X4. So if we take a look at that, which is making $3.54 a day with residential electric rate, and um, it's, it's a, I mean, it's a big ASIC. And I was looking at this thing. And I was like, what does this cost? This is just fun part of the video, by the way. $13,999. $14,000. Move over on Jingle Mining's website where you can buy one if you want to. Jingle Mining sponsored this channel in the past. Not a sponsor of this video. I'm just doing some research. And there it is. $14,000 ships in 30 days. What is the break even on that thing? Let's go look. Got the hash rate in. Power in, cost, residential electric rate, calculate. Break even in 4,000 days. That is crazy. Please don't buy that thing. I gotta imagine the price on that thing's gotta come down. Who would buy that? Break even in 4,000 days? You may not even be alive then. That's crazy. Uh, I think that's it. Is that everything I wanna talk about in this video? I think so, but that's what I've been checking every day. I know if, if, if you're like me, there's many of you out there uh, who have their GPUs off, collecting dust, or maybe some of you watching this sold a majority of their your GPUs. That's all okay. Uh, but I think we're gonna find some equilibrium at some point, and based on your electric rate, you're gonna make the best decision for yourself. Ultimately, again, don't mine at a significant loss. I just don't think it's a wise financial decision, but if you wanna do some speculative mining, which I'll probably do a video on in the future, or you want to uh, burn some electric to support a project you really believe in, to support their network and their network security. I think 
that's totally okay too gets down to the grassroots of mining but ultimately too if you're looking to make some significant money in cryptocurrency um, don't burn your electric to do that just take the money you pay for your electric anyway and go on an exchange and buy the crypto that you're looking to get again unless you're like spec mining it's not available i'll do a video on that in the future that's it guys i would love to know if you're still mining are you mining at a loss what gpus are you using what's the most efficient gpus you have up in mind right now let me know down in the comment section below hope you guys enjoyed this video hit the like button if you did sub to the channel for more mining content join my discord social media links are all down in the description and as always please take care of yourself and each other and i'll see you in the next video